Hey guys, it's Vince. Today we're going to be looking at the SMCU integrated system backplate. And the reason I'm doing this is because number one, I'm getting a lot of questions regarding the system ever since I released the video uh, highlighting it. And on top of that, I told you I would do a follow-up as the system is coming to fruition as far as being built. First and foremost, you can see here, we've got all of our motor connectors all done. Everything is installed. You can see exactly how this goes. We've got our four pin connectors for our motor drivers. And then we have our ferrites here. And once again, you can see the ground leads with ring connector ready to go and be allocated to our ground bus. And that's for all four axes. Underneath each of these, you'll notice that we also have another ferrite. One, two, three, four. And that is for our switches. So not only is our drives done, but now our switches are done as well, and you can see the shield drain, once again with ring connector, already pre-installed, allocated. So everything here is essentially wired for hookup along with our VFD interface. Now you can see some of these leads I had to extend, um, and that just required me resoldering a couple leads. That's mainly because, of course, as you go through the system, you wanna make everything as neat as possible, like many of you wanna do, and that's, of course, what is required to be done. Once again, we have its shield drain as well. You notice every connector has its own integrated shield drain. And that is because whatever double shielded cable is plugged into these connectors will once again be grounded on the inside of the enclosure utilizing its ground bus as it should be on one end only. You will not be grounding the other end. Once again, I'll state that you will only be using the shield drains that are coming off of these connectors to the ground bus, and you would not be grounding the opposite end, so we do not have any potential for a ground loop, okay? Now, you'll also notice that we have our ferrite installed on our signals for our VFD as well. So now we've got passive filtration all the way across all connectors. And that means that all of the connectors that are once again entering into the enclosure are filtered. And once again, you can see just how long these leads are. So this is how simple it can be when we integrate a drive. That being said, you can see here, and this is a question that comes up and it's a pretty basic question, but I wanna cover it because a lot of the videos we see guys always extending their leads. And of course I had to do it to a fan because once again, I wanna get optimal neatness when we actually go to wire everything. So I'm using silicone leads here. And in order to do this properly, you can see right here, we go and we use single wall heat shrink to insulate after soldering each of the leads, red and black. Once that's done, of course, with using flux and solder, we then put the single wall heat shrink on each of these and then go over it with a piece of double wall with adhesive uh, heat shrink. And the reason we do that is this becomes a very thick, basically a polymer, so that it adds strength to our leads. I see guys doing this all the time and they'll twine wires together and they go through a lot of crazy different things to try to make the leads neat. The truth of the matter is, when you're trying to merge two leads, the main thing you want is the flux, which 99.9% .9 of all YouTubers do not possess and own and use properly. And then on top of that, you want a quality solder because once that weld is complete and everything is joined, you're really never looking at tension on those components or you shouldn't be. And if you are going to look at a structurally tensioned component, you wouldn't be using electrical solder. You would want to step up to like a silver solder, which would be used more or less for brazing. Okay. My welders out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Soldering for electronics, once again, under the pretense of doing it to where we're trying to keep everything neat with the lowest possible resistance. Once again, these connections are forever, especially with our ring connectors here for grounds. Uh, you can see how big the ring connector is. And being, once again, we're utilizing a ring connector. Once the screw is inserted in here, these can never back out. Keeps everything very neat and it keeps everything set. So once it hits the ground bus, we have a larger amount of mass making conduction, which once again, lowers resistance. And that's exactly what we want with precision electronics. Now, I get a lot of questions on lead gauge. You can see on our motors, they are using 18 gauge silicone leads along with an 18 gauge uh, ground for our shield drain. Now, 
for our switches. We're using 20 gauge silicone leads and a 20 gauge shield ring. And the main reason that is, of course, is because switches have no real voltage associated with them. They're not drawing amps, but our uh, motors naturally are. They're going to be drawing, once again, this system can support up to 9 amp motors. So we want to make sure that whatever gauge wire we're working with, that it's going to support that. Now, under normal pretenses, most systems will never use a 9 amp motor unless you're using, once again, uh, the system to retrofit a large bridge port or a much larger uh, CNC robot. But once again, you still want to pay close attention to the proper gauge wires you're using. Why do I always use silicone? Because of the flexibility, guys. If you ever service your system and you start manipulating things, you're going to find you typically want to stay with silicone leads because everything is very easy to manipulate, especially in the pretense that I've already wired the connectors outside of the enclosure. And that's, once again, why you like having an enclosure that completely breaks down. And you can see exactly how this is held in place. So it just keeps everything that much neater. And now you don't have to worry about double shielded cable being used on the inside of the enclosure because once again, we have passive filtration here with our ferrites. Now, let me cover in detail what I mean by ferrites. You want to make sure you're using a really good brand matched to the proper frequency. And this is ferrite, which again, you can see it right here. These are genuine as these are only purchased from me. Uh, from U.S. vendors. I will not go and purchase these overseas. They must be the proper frequency and they must be genuine quality to get the effect you're looking for. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you cut corners on these units, and once again, they are magnet, you can see inside there, and your leads naturally just come and get laid right in upon um, this groove right here. And you must stay with brands that are genuine. TDK right here and you can see right here the pocket once again and they come in different internal diameters for passive filtration now another question that comes up and this comes up quite a bit is what if my leads are too small to install the proper size ferrite or i only have a certain size ferrite in stock can i use it i get that asked all the time to me well if it's matched to the proper frequency what you can do is you can add a piece of heat shrink. I'm going to show you what I mean. I'll pop this one off. And this I do commonly. As long as the ferrite is, again, using a larger magnet, you're fine doing that. And basically what you're doing is using the piece of heat shrink as a shim. You want to naturally use single wall heat shrink. You don't want to use double wall for this. And the main reason you do, and you want the heat shrink to properly fit within the ferrite, so that you're just adding a shim layer. Now you can also do this, and you can see you can adjust this very easy. It should fit snug, but it should not fit snug enough that it would damage the external conductor's casing. I cannot emphasize that enough. If it's cutting into the casing, it's no bueno. So you want to make sure that everything here is set but not set so firmly that you would damage the external casing on any of these. And again, all of the sizes are matched and the frequencies are matched. That's why you see different sizes being used. Now on our uh, VFD, it's the same principle. Now these are 18 gauge leads and you can see how nice it's easy to adjust. And I did not have to use any heat shrink here because of the diameter of the 18 gauge leads that these are filtering. Now I'm going to cover in detail again you see only two leads being filtered. Why is that? Because these are not requiring filtering, because these are signals, these are not, okay? Now, I cannot emphasize, <clears throat> excuse me, that enough. If you are going to use ferrites, you only want to use ferrites, or optimally will only want to use ferrites, or double shielded cable, or shielded cable in general, on any lead that is carrying a sensitive signal. You do not need to shield everything in the system. For instance, the fan. This does not need shielding. It's just running the fan. Okay, so realistically, if it's a general power lead, this is not requiring shielding. And that's going from your power supply 
to your drives, for instance, those typically you do not need shielding. And with good purpose, because if you're shielding all the cables that are carrying the sensitive step and direction signals on either system, servo steppers, whatever it may be, then it's already filtering that or it's protecting those leads from any exterior noise sources. So there's no point in having to do that. So now hopefully you guys understand exactly where we are. And you can see here, our UC400 is set up and the UC400, just to clarify, takes 12 to 24 volts. This unit's very interesting because it has a built-in step down. So if you put in more than 12 volts, it's gonna naturally step it down to the voltage that the system will take, which is typically 12. And then what we'll see here is the power leads going to our UC400, okay? Now you see how long this is. And the reason, of course, I made this long is certain leads, like the fan leads, you cannot predetermine length until I'm finalizing the system. So as I go through the system, and I go through in more or less a day-by-day -day basis of doing all this work, each configuration, meaning each motor, each switch, if I'm doing motors today and I'm doing switches, that'll be all I'll do for the day. And I highly recommend you trying that. Don't work in the pre pretense that you're working in eight, 10 hours. I've had guys do that, and I cannot emphasize how bad an idea that is. That's a general government idea of working six to eight hours detail work. I don't want a surgeon working on me when he's tired, nor should you want to naturally be doing anything critical with sensitive electronics when you're tired. I've had guys come home from work and then they decide they want to rewire our system. Guys, use your head. That doesn't make sense. So I'm telling you right now, give yourself, if you've never done anything like this, and even a simplified system like this, which any of you who have already built the system realize just how simple this is, I only typically work an hour or two at a time. But the hour or two I put in is quality work. It's Amish quality work. Think about it like that. When people look at the Amish, and many of you are familiar with them, they have an impeccable work quality. But it's the way they work. And that's something that I hate to say it in the U.S. a lot of us don't represent. We don't see that anymore. And that's why. It's because they know how to break things down. They're not rushing. Everything is quality. So they don't have to put out as many quantity because everything they put out is much higher in quality. So once again, if you're going to work on your motors, just do your motors one night. Be done. That's it. Move to the next. Do your switches. And just keep going down the line and you'll see how it'll fall together very quickly. Once again, all leads have already been cut because the mock-up was done. So all these leads are predetermined in length. Everything is set to, once again, go inside the enclosure once that's completed, and we'll be good with that. I'm going to cut the video now, and I'm going to go over to the enclosure that's broken down to show you that I've put in a step-down to provide 24 volts for our switches along with our UC400. Okay, guys. This portion of the video, I'm going to cover where our DC step down is installed. Now, you can also see that we do have power filtration on this. We also have a micronized fan, and this does have voltage adjustment right here. And the reason I like this setup, and you'll notice that I've elevated it, and I tell guys all the time I'm using uh, quarter inch standoffs here doubled so I get a half inch height. Now, the reason I tell guys all the time to elevate their components when possible is if you're trying to make your wiring neat, if you elevate your components, you can run your wiring underneath other components. You don't see that done enough. YouTube content creators never do it, but it's an option to always look at because if you notice here, our power supply inputs for live, neutral, and ground are right here. Well, optimally, it would be great to be able to come over here. I'm going to run the leads underneath and then come to live, neutral, and ground, and everything is nice and neat, okay? And you can see the lead length going from power in. So we got V plus in the back, V negative in the front, and then we're just going to run two leads over here, and that'll convert our power to the step down to once again reduce our voltage to whatever we choose. Again, this is adjustable voltage. We only need 24 volts, and we're set. And look at the massive heat sink that this step down has along with the active cooling with an integrated fan, okay? When you guys look at step-downs, always pay close attention to the cooling of it. And in this case, we are only running 24 volts. And being we're running switches and we're running the UC400, the amp draw is in, you know, very, very, very minute, milli milliamps. So, again, very, very small 
but you want to make sure the unit is done correctly. As a matter of fact, when I mounted this, I reduced, I actually came in, machined down so I could get proper spacing. So everything is nice and neat. And I tell you guys, pay close attention to that because keeping your case organized for all of your components to actually be mocked up allows for simple servicing. And once again, seeing how the back plates removed with all the wiring done, you could see just how easy this is to service. Again, we've got our ground bus here, toolessly mounted, toolless mounted power distribution blocks. In this case, these are just terminal splitters. So one lead, the red lead coming in off VSW once again here, that splits that signal all the way out. We got a ground lead here that splits this signal all the way out over here. And then when we come on this side, this unit will go from our step down. So we'll have our 24 volt leads coming over here, boom. And then this way we have our split for power if it's required by an end user switches or naturally going to be required for our UC400. So therefore you only have one output here. By utilizing the terminal split here, you are not going to require to daisy chain, which again is not best practice. So these are questions I get asked all the time. And as the system comes to fruition, you can see exactly the logic behind doing all this. And of course the toolless thumb screws uh, or thumb nuts, excuse me, actually allow you to service this very, very quickly. Once again, we have standoffs here. I went higher on the standoffs once again. So if we have to run wire underneath, nice and neat, see? That's the premise when we talk about engineering is understanding exactly every detail we're working with. Because even our ground bus, if you notice, you see where the plugs are for our drives. I mounted this low enough so we have proper clearance over here. Because if you don't do that and you make the ground bus high or you do anything that, once again, uh, puts components in the way of other components, it's going to bite you. You can also see I put some um, wire tie hold downs here and here. And the main reason I did that is so that when we run our VFD um, wiring in, it's going to come naturally comes to the top of the connector here. We'll have two leads coming in here. And then we're going to have two leads come over with the ferrite that I've already installed and showed you previously in the video. And they'll come over here and that'll come right over here to these terminals and get connected. Okay, so we've got the hole in the drive up here. The leads will pass through and then come right in. So you can see exactly how everything is starting to come together. Everything has been thought about. If you look at this fan's placement for our step down, you can see that we're going to have an intake fan right here. It's going to feed our 48 volt power supply powering our drives. It's also going to feed and help bring in cool air for our step down. So and then, of course, it disperses that air over the drives where, again, we have our uh, evacuation fan mounted in the back panel that will take any hot air and basically recirculate. It's going to remove it. We have cool air coming in, hot air going out. Everybody's happy. So you can see now how everything is done. One other point I want to make. This drive is its own giant heat sink in that all of the MST-109 drives, all four of them, one, two, three, four. All four of these are mounted on its base. And you can see this heat sink right here for each drive. Well, naturally, the more we keep expanding all of the metal making contact with the drives, the better the cooling gets. That being said, I put thermal paste underneath the drive and made sure that now it's also connected to the base plate of the chassis, which expands the cooling even more because we have greater mass and therefore makes it much better to cool this system in general. And that's exactly what we've got here. So seeing it come together, I think it helps you guys really visualize just how simple this is. And once again, you can see all of our fuses, which I love. Each drive has its own built-in fast-acting fuse along with the power supply module. So everything is simple to be changed should that be required. So again, guys, I hope that this video is growing uh, you know, more and more in your mind as far as what questions are being asked. I know that when you see things like this, you have more questions, but overall, the simplicity of the design is too, just far greater than anything we've seen in an IDS system. I mean, many of you guys have seen the YouTube content creator videos where 
They're wiring each drive individually, and that's done. You're not doing that anymore. You've got the four leads coming into each of your motors. There's your drives. That's the beauty of using a motherboard because when that motherboard has all of the circuitry into it and the, the drives just plug into the motherboard, that's it. I mean, essentially what they've done, and I guess the easiest way to explain it, is take a breakout board and make it pluggable for your drives. So therefore, there's no wiring. There's no worry about noise. And that's why the only amount of noise you could possibly have is from the connectors themselves. And you saw how easy that is because the back plate gets mounted here and you only got about a six inch lead run right to it. So watching this come together, very, very easy. Live, neutral, and ground. Once again, we'll go to our switch. Finalize everything, IEC power in the back. So once we plug in the power cord, we'll feed our power directly to our switch. Our switch then when it's switched on, we'll turn on the power supply. And henceforth, also power on the uh, step down. And that will once again provide logic to our uh, drives as well as provide the switch power and also our UC400 power. So you can see exactly what we have here. Now the further revision of this, and I've already discussed this with Pitar, is that it will have an integrated step down, okay? It's also gonna have integrated GX16 five pin connectors with a built-in ground, which means you're shortening the work even more. So think about that. I'm telling you right now, this is an amazing platform. I think it's really going to streamline a lot of your ideas. I mean, looking at just how simple this is, I mean, four bolts and you've got all your drives done. All your drives, your logic, everything is done. We don't ever see that with uh, a system of this caliber as far as what it can support. So hopefully, like I said, this really answers many of your questions. If you do have more questions, stay tuned because uh, I'm definitely going to be covering this in more detail as we get done. I'll show you the final wiring. But uh, it's definitely taking some time to get all of the engineering done because this is the first model. So once this revision gets done, the second versions are always going to move much faster. Um, but stay tuned because I want to show you guys a, a way that you guys can make money because I'm always showing you products. And this way, hopefully you can use some past investing that I've done, um, once again, with a, a FED, an FDIC insured bank, which many of you will have heard of Goldman Sachs, um, and check out exactly uh, what I do to make more of a passive income, which I feel will help many of you. Today, we are going to be walking a part of my driveway. Now, you guys can see out here, I've had a lot of questions about the new house and this is only part of my drive going up and you can see it's a very, very steep incline. You can see the mountains there. Um, and I am in the Great Smokies and I'm just walking up part of the drive to my new house. And once again, I cannot emphasize how much I appreciate all of you because without you, this of course would not be possible. Isn't that right, Joanna? That's right. So, we are in a totally different area. Many of you know I used to reside in Florida. Personally, I feel Florida is overpopulated. And now we are in a much, much less dense area. Give you some perspective of the Smokies. That is my new shop. The lab, of course, is inside the house. Give you more perspective. Now, of course, I own all of this as well. We'll go over the land because it's very hard to get perspective and scale. So we'll do that. Many of you have not seen me. I've never put my face on camera and that's gonna change because I wanna personally say thank you, at least unless you've scheduled a consultation. So I want to finally say to all of you, thank you. It's been well over a decade. You helped me achieve this. I actually never really discussed this on camera and 
This to me is what defines success. We all talk about the American dream and so many feel it's dead. It's not dead, guys. You just have to work for it. And we're gonna continue to walk. I'm gonna have Joanna shoot. We're gonna walk around to give you perspective of this area. I've always wanted to live in the mountains. And this is one of the, I think, one of the most beautiful areas in Tennessee. As a matter of fact, you can see I've never even taken the plaque out, really, of the plastic. Okay guys, this makes up the majority of our 14 acres right here. And again, you can see perspective on how high this mountainside is. I mean, within scale, it shows you exactly what we're dealing with. And please pardon the hay right now. I'm growing this because I'm going to demonstrate a new robot that I've actually worked on a design for. So there's a reason that it's actually this high. That being said, back in the house, back in the outbuilding. And of course, this would never, ever be possible without multiple streams of income. And I've told you guys now, without a doubt, anyone I've spoken to with consultations, that is the key to getting what you want. You're very seldom today going to get away with a single stream of income, or even two streams of income if you're supporting a family and doing everything that we've generally grown up to understand. I know that's the way I was raised. I know many of, that, many of you, that's the way you were raised. I never liked working for anyone but myself, and to be quite honest, the only way you're going to be able to do that and be truly successful, at least to get what you consider to be your personal dream, would be definitely looking at multiple streams of income. And the easiest way to do that is by investing your money, which you're probably saving in another bank anyways, in one that's going to yield you the best interest rate. And my personal opinion is right now I'm working with Marcus of Goldman Sachs and they are amazing i mean right now we're looking at an interest rate what is it 4.4 4.4 and i will show you a way to get an extra point on top of that okay and i'm not going to give you any bs like we see most of the stuff online with social media i'm going to show you i put my money where my mouth is and that is only one of my accounts but to have this and of course i own another home in florida right now it's for sale there's no way i could do this without understanding how to invest in trying to get another stream going where at least your money that you've worked very hard for is just as well working hard for you. And I'm gonna show you that. I've showed you different products that will help you create products for sale. This is one that you can do and you're probably doing now already. Check it out. And of course, I'm not being endorsed by anyone. I'm doing this myself and I'm showing you this. And remember this, what you see here, I've never taken a Kickstarter account. There's been no loans. That's my accountant behind the camera right now, and she can vouch for this. Everything I've done, I've done literally by myself. There is no games, no gimmicks, just like many of you, you go to work every day, you work hard. Um, that's something that I've really put forth a lot of effort for. And again, doing this over a decade, once again, it's been my pleasure automating your ideas. And I look forward to showing you that in the future, but right now we're gonna cut over and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with Marcus of Goldman Sachs. Okay guys, I'm on Marcus by Goldman Sachs website. I'll put the link in the video description below. And I'm just gonna cover this briefly, just to bring it to your attention. Many of you are already uh, putting your money in a bank and you're really not making much interest. I highly recommend you check this out. Um, it will help many of you definitively. And best of all, it is a safe investment. When I say safe, they are a member of the FDIC. Your money is insured by the government, it is a registered bank, and under a single name account, you're covered under a quarter of a million dollars of protection. Under a joint account, like my account, many of yours will be, you're covered un under uh, half a million dollars of protection, so you're good to go there. This account will offer same-day transfers of up to $100,000. You do have a contact center available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's no fees, no minimum deposit, and again, you're earning a rate they're claiming by eight times more than a national average. And I can tell you by me, where I live, it is a ridiculous amount higher than what these banks wanted to give me. And once again, I wanna cover what this account isn't because you can do some research on YouTube 
and these YouTubers all claim that they are, you know, breaking down the pros and the cons of this account. I'm going to tell you, I've been part of it now for about eight months and I'm going to show you my account. It's live. There is no BS. You'll see my money in the account. And once again, I'm not being endorsed by them at all. I'm not paid or uh, asked to promote them in any way. I'm just offering you a benefit in terms of being able to not only have the 4.4% to start with, but if you sign on with me, we both will make an extra percent and it costs you nothing. So that means instead of starting at 4.4, you would start at 5.4. And I'll show you that. But first, the account will not issue you a debit card. It is not designed to be used as a debit account. What does that mean? That means that if you're already using a debit account with your bank, then you will want to keep that account just for debit transactions. This is a savings account. It is more in tune with a CD, except, let me say this carefully, except a CD, your money is locked for a certain predetermined amount of time. This account allows you to transfer whenever you want. The only difference is it's a savings account. So to me, that's not a con if they're disclosing it already, which they are. And a lot of YouTubers that do any type of reviews on these accounts, they like to say it's a con. Well, again, the con to me is where the company or the financial institution is not disclosing that. If they're disclosing it, it's not a con. It's something you should once again review prior to getting involved with them. Either way, to show you I'm a man of my word, I'm bringing you into my account. And you can see I put my money where my mouth is. Okay, now this is one of my accounts. This is not my only account because, once again, um, this is a savings account. Um, but again, it shows that I was paid interest. You can see that right here. And knowing that you are getting that 4.4%, you could see up here where it says refer a friend. And if I click on that, you could see I'm issued a code. And I'm going to put this code in my video's description link to all of you. Once again, there's no minimum deposit. All you're wanting to do is save your money. But when you use this code, you will not be earning the 4.4%. You'll be earning 5.4%. And this is a referred rate for three months. Now, many of you are saying, well, it's only for three months. That's true. And you can see here how Marcus Referred works. Marcus Customer Refers a Friend. I'm not going to go through all this because you guys can review this yourself. But rest assured, I have gone through it. And friend opens an account, earns a Marcus referred rate. Number three, customer who referred earns a Marcus referred rate too. But what's really interesting is if you then refer, refer another person and they issue themselves an account as well, you will then extend that three-month period for up to 15 months, which means five people under you would actually deposit money. And now you and them are both making up to 15 months of that 5.4%, which is really amazing. So naturally, the um, interest rate will change varied upon, you know, where we are in, in society and in political format. But overall, this is one of the best interest rates that is legit. And when I say legit, believe you me, before I put in the money I just showed you, I wanted to make sure I crossed every T and dot every I. And you can rest assured that looking at this and referring it to what other banks are out there claiming much higher margins, the thing you need to keep in mind is what are the prerequisites and what is the fine print? And I'm telling you now, go over the fine print carefully and you will find that they are totally legit. And, and especially in the sense that you can contact them. Matter of fact, we had an issue uh, with a security transfer. We were contacted by them immediately. We handled everything. They were fantastic about it. They gave us a time frame of when the money would show up in the account, not show up in the account. And when you start dealing with larger sums of money, you guys will see that if you haven't dealt with that already, banks get weird. They want to cover their bases and make sure the government's happy and they're happy. And that was one thing we went through when, once again, making larger deposits and they are textbook. So I'm telling you right now, there's no delay in your payments. There's no delay in you transferring anything. They are a legit bank. And if you're serious about making a passive income, and of course, 
you're not going to get really rich off of this unless you make a really large deposit, but your money will steadily grow. And that is what we are all essentially trying to do. And once again, every month we get paid, uh, even if we don't deposit more money, you're still making your interest. And it's a hell of a lot higher than what you get at normal banks, at least in my general area. And I'm assuming it's yours too, because it's based on a national average. So again, guys, I will put this link in the description. Check it out. I want to thank you all for your support over the years. Take care.